As I said before, uh, I do uh, relish the fact that as a uh, stepmother, I have boasting rights because I had nothing to do with her DNA. But I do want to tell you that I am uh, so proud of Lillian, uh, not only for her accomplishments as a student, but also for her accomplishments in reading for the blind, in sponsoring a child in Haiti, and for playing a long and very vital role in her church's youth group. Uh, she embodies goodness and compassion and confidence. And I really appreciate your coming today, and thank you, Lillian. <coughs> So, uh, my name is Lillian, the other Lillian, um, and I'm Dick's daughter and Ruth's stepdaughter. And as you may guess from this pillowy hat I'm wearing, I received a PhD this spring. The only reason I'm here today is because Ruth tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, she may seem mild-mannered and deferential. They know better. Yes. <laughs> so apparently, as anyone in this congregation knows, and anybody who's ever played her at cards well knows, she's just very, very clever about timing her sneak attacks. <laughs> so just a few hours after I had defended my dissertation in genetics, finally capping nearly six years of emotional turmoil and intellectual exhaustion, <coughs> Ruth issued this command to me. Lily, you'll preach on June 10th <laughs> on confidence. What was I to say? I don't feel up to it. <laughs> I'm too shy. So for a month, I stared daily at that item on my to-do list that read, Think about confidence. That was productive. <laughs> Growing up, somebody once told me an anecdote about a college level philosophy course in which the final exam had but one question. What is courage? The professor, no doubt, was counting on the premise that this vague and gauzy question would absorb the bright students' minds and inspire them to fill reams of paper with eloqu eloquent logic. To this question of what is courage, the top student wrote an answer of just two words. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Setting down her pen, leaving the rest of the pages blank, and walking confidently out of the room. <laughs> Isn't that inspirational? No, it's really annoying, and it's impractical. Personally, I prefer to answer questions that have well-defined boundaries and singularly correct solutions. I would rather know when I've reached the right conclusion. That's what drew me to science in the first place which is funny because it turns out that at the graduate level, there are no longer any right answers. Upon entering graduate school, I was unceremoniously tossed beyond my beloved well-defined. I was in the weeds. I flailed about blindly, swimming in a vast and stormy ocean without a compass, and uncertain if any shores were in sight, let alone what direction they might be in. You're a great scientist. Have confidence in yourself. Mentors, teachers, and on occasion Oprah would tell me. <laughs> confidence is what we in genetics call a dosage sensitive trait. Too much and you're that jerk nobody likes who overvalues her own opinions. Too little and you can't be trusted to actually tackle the difficult problems. 
just the right amount is essential for proper functioning. But how can you know what the right amount is? You'll make it, just believe in yourself. Fortune cookies, cartoon shows, and my best friends would tell me. The stakes of having such blind faith in myself seemed too high, though. What if I falsely believed in myself without really deserving it? I was already entrenched in an institution renowned not only for the intellectual prowess of the celebrated few, but for the overblown egos displayed by the many. With all of the posturing and preening that goes on in academic institutions, life as an earnest graduate student can be very lonely. And there was the key. In this lonely, isolated world of laboratory research, the key was not simply to trust myself, as I was so often instructed to do, but instead to trust others. Trust that if I got it wrong, my peers, my friends, and colleagues would stand by me, patiently waiting for me to get it right. After all, aren't the negative reactions of our friends the very basis of the fear that undermines our confidence? The key to confidence just might be not to believe in your own infinite wisdom and capacity, but to believe in the goodness, the patience and forgiveness of others, to have faith that others won't turn their backs on me when I inevitably fall short of the mark, that they will value not only my products, but also my earnest efforts. Six years of graduate school have passed, and at last my swimming is over. I have found my sunny island amidst the stormy ocean of scientific unknowns. And on this island, I find people with generous souls, forgiving natures, and above all, those whom I can trust. And that is what I think about when I think about confidence. Thank you.